Today I want to talk about the movie Home Alone. How can you not like Home Alone? This is absolutely one of my favorite Christmas movies as well as one of my favorite movies, period. My little brother's name is Kevin, so obviously the classic Kevin scenes in the movie always tickle me. Growing up, people always said that I look just like Macaulay Culkin, you know? When I was younger, it kind of bothered me, but now I kind of like, hey, there's worse cute kids that you could look like when you were also a kid, right? But I love watching this movie. I actually look forward to the holiday season so I can have an excuse to watch this movie. Usually, I watch Home Alone twice. It's usually the first movie I watch in December and the movie I like to watch on Christmas Eve. It's just my favorite movie. Uh, and every time I watch it, I like it more and more. As I'm getting older, I'm also catching a lot more detail in the film than I did you know, when I was younger. I enjoy watching this movie again and again because I start to, to like, it's really the little details that, that, that you start to, to appreciate. Every scene of this movie, every shot of this movie, every, every detail, every prop on set, every, every decoration on set, it was chosen deliberately, right? Both to build that Christmas element of the movie, right? But also, every item in every shot is, is there with purpose to help tell the story. Callbacks and panning shots of items that you, you don't pay attention to because they're just in the background, they get pulled in later in the movie, right? It's, it's, a, it's a really, really well-crafted movie from start to finish. I really, really love this movie. The music in this movie is also some of my favorite, right? It's so spot on with what you want to feel when you listen to Christmas time music. Just the Home Alone soundtrack is something I enjoy listening to to help get into the holiday mood, whether it's in the holiday time of year or in like July. And every time I watch it, that last, or the ending of the movie, when Kevin's mom finally comes home and then he's kind of looking at her and then he smiles and then they hug, Goosebumps every time. As I get older, I'm becoming a little more of a softie. <laughs> also, being shot in Chicago, Chicago's a really cool city. I almost moved to Chicago one time a couple years ago for a job, but they didn't offer me as much money as I felt I needed to to live there because it's really expensive. But what could have been? You know, and, and I went up there, I really should, I had a, I rented a car. I didn't think about it. I think I focused more on, on driving on the the whatever the freeway is next to the to the lake lakeside drive or whatever it's called i really should have looked up the McAllister house driven by it to go see it in person and take a picture maybe one day maybe i'll get up to chicago and check it out i'll, I'll be that guy that orders a cheese pizza at the McAllister house but no this this movie is is so good always funny it'll never get old it also kind of stands the test of time you know except for like obviously if cell phones were invented it the movie couldn't happen. So like it stands the test of time in that you accept the movie for what it is because of when it was made. You know, the, the time that in which it's set. Once you accept that, you don't really look at the movie and be, yeah, I don't know, I don't know this. I feel like this is one of these movies where it's believable, even the parts that are not believable, it's still believable, right? I look forward to watching this movie again this year. I hope you all watch it too.